What's up, everybody? Good afternoon. We have our final injury report and practice report of the week, so we, well, in theory, would have a better idea about what team the Seahawks are going to throw on the field um, this Sunday against the 49ers, but in reality, we actually don't. We actually know less than we typically do, I think. So uh, we have the latest from John Boyle on X. Let's take a look here and try to dissect this up and figure out what we're going to be doing this Sunday because it's going to take some dissection because the team isn't really telling us. Um, let's zoom in a little bit here and focus in on the stuff that really matters here, the Friday practice report and then the injury report. So as you can see, we had two players not participate in practice. Jaron Reed and Geno Smith. Obviously, the Geno Smith one is kind of a big deal because that means he's going the wrong way. He was fine on Wednesday. Thursday, he was limited, and now he de did not participate. Now, if you look at the actual game status over here on the um, over here on the right side, you can see that both players, Jaron Reed and Geno Smith, are listed as questionable. Now, Pete Carroll already talked a little bit about this. He said that Jaron Reed is going to play, he believes, and Geno Smith is a game-time decision. So, Reed, it sounds like, just got the day off and there's nothing really to it. Makes sense. Um, he's played way too many snaps this year. He's worn out. If anybody deserves to take a practice off, it's him. But it sounds like Reed will play. But Geno Smith, he refused to commit on. So, we may really get that Drew Locke start that some people really seem to want. So... For those of you out there who are pro Drew Locke and want to see what he can do and maybe you're sick of Geno or whatever for whatever reason, I don't know. But if, if that's something that you've been desiring this season, you might be about to get your wish. And quite honestly, if Geno Smith is actually inhibited by an injury, the last thing we need to do is throw him out there against the 49ers defense. So wouldn't surprise me if we did see Drew Locke in this game and... I don't think it changes anything too dramatically in terms of us thinking whether or not we're going to win or lose. It does, however, I think weaken our offense beyond what we're already think, whatever little we're already thinking of it. So to be perfectly honest, um, it, it's not like this is going to be some devastating, some some devastating element of this game necessarily. It's not like we think that not having Geno will cost us the game. But I do think it'll cost us our chance to be competitive on offense. But we'll have to see. As of right now, I'm not super encouraged about Geno playing this weekend, which is a shocking plot twist. But only the next couple days will tell us. So those are the two guys who didn't practice today. We had three guys who were limited. Jordan Brooks, so he made a step in the right direction today. Trey Brown, limited made a step in the right direction, and Eskridge Limited made a step in the right direction. If you go to the questionable tag, which, by the way, that's where everybody is. We don't have any players listed as out, and we don't have any players listed as doubtful. Everybody is questionable. You can see that Jordan Brooks is questionable, which is better than I expected, so that's good news. Trey Brown is questionable, and at this point, that's about the best you can hope for when he barely practices all week. Good news. And then Eskridge is also questionable, so... I, I'm going to say that's good news at this point. I wouldn't expect him to play because it's Eskridge and it seems like he, you know, with him, just injuries are something that he just can't get away from. But at the very least, they have a shot. And that's really good news for Jordan Brooks because I was really concerned about that injury when he had it. It looked bad and it sounded bad coming out of that game. Um, everybody else was a full participant, either because their injury wasn't significant enough to hold them out, or because they're not injured at all. Now, we still do have a couple of guys here who are questionable that I didn't mention yet, like Charbonnet and Walker are both listed as questionable for this game, even though they have, were full participants in practice today, that we still consider them to be not, we're, we're not so sure. If I had to guess... I'd say Charbonnet plays and Walker does not. But the fact that both guys were able to punch in a full practice today is encouraging. And maybe we'll have both. Maybe we'll have neither, I guess. That's still a distinct possibility. It seems like we're playing it cautiously here. But I would expect to have at least one at this point if both guys are full participants on Friday. Um, and that's it for the questionable report. That's it in terms of stuff that could go one way or the other according to the Seahawks. 
Uh, Jamal Adams not listed with an injury tag. Leonard Williams not listed with an injury tag. Uh, Bradford and Lucas are both not listed on the uh, game report, just the practice report. Jake Bobo, Evan Brown, Derek Young. So all those guys should be basically 100% good to go. So there is definitely some good news here. Things got better, and it's very possible that by the time the game actually starts, everybody is just going to go, and we're going to be as healthy as we've been in a while. But I, I do have questions about a, few, about a few of the guys on this list, and I would be very surprised if everybody actually did play. So that's it for the Seahawks side of things. As you can see, it's very mysterious, right? There isn't as much clarity as we usually get here. Like everybody we listed with an injury going into this game is questionable, which is theoretically 50-50. I think in reality, it's more like 65-35. But regardless, there's just kind of a lot we don't know. Uh, real quick, I want to go to the 49ers side of things because they're actually hurting a little bit, more than we thought. So they are probably going to be missing six players in this game, and some of the players they're going to be missing are significant. They've already declared three players out. Armstead, um, who's obviously the big loss here, their interior defensive lineman who's typically had a lot of success against Seattle, and he's a successful player in general. Ross Dwelly is also out. He's their backup tight end. And wide receiver Ray Ray McLeod, I think he's their number three. If not, he's one of their depth receivers, uh, is also out. So the Niners are actually dealing with some stuff right now. And um, you, you are not going to catch the Niners much weaker than that, especially when you stack on top of that three players who are doubtful. We have Spencer Burford uh, with a knee injury, and at this point I would not expect him to play at all. Elijah Mitchell, doubtful with a knee injury and Daryl Luter with a hamstring injury. And remember, doubtful almost always means out. If a player is listed as doubtful, I seriously doubt they're going to play. It, it, it They say it's like 25%. In practice, it feels more like 10%. If a guy's doubtful, you can forget about it. So the Niners are more definitively beat up than the Seahawks right now. Now, by if we don't have Geno for game day, then of course that changes because... We lean so heavily on our quarterback to play well, and not having our starter versus not having our uh, versus having the um, versus having our starter is such a big deal in terms of the swing. But if we do have most or even all of these guys who are questionable, then we are much healthier than the Niners. So if there's ever a chance to go into San Fran and pull a monster upset, it's it's this week. All right, so that's all we got right now. Uh, Niners definitely banged up. Seahawks banged up, but with a little more potential optimism. Uh, might be another video later today. If not, I'll be on Twitch later tonight in all likelihood, and there will be my preview tomorrow morning. See you guys later. Go Hawks. Let me know what you think down below, if anything. Hopefully most of these guys are good to go for game day.